In this example, we're asked to find the Fourier transform of a top hat function. This function is shown in the box on the right hand side here. And I've also quoted the result that we're going to have to use the definition of the Fourier transform. So we have a problem in the way that the function is defined because it involves both maths and words. However, we can deal with this in a similar way to the way we dealt with some of the Fourier series by splitting up the integral to cover a number of connected regions. So we can write that f of omega is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi then brackets then we'll have our first integral that will take us between minus infinity and minus tor Then we have the function f of t and then the complex exponential and then the second integral will take us from minus tor to plus tor and again we have f of t e to the minus i omega t dt and then our third integral will take us from plus tor to infinity and again we have the function e to the minus i omega t dt and then we close brackets there and we're allowed to do this as long as the initial and final limits are equal to the original limits of the integral and also as long as these two limits are equal to each other and these two limits here are also equal to each other. What we can do now is we can write in values for the function. So between minus infinity and minus tor, the integral, the function has the value zero. Between minus tor and plus tor, it has the value equal to one. And between the value plus tor and infinity, it has a value equal to zero. So what we can see now is that this first integral just gives us zero because the function is always zero over the integration range. And similarly, the last integral is also equal to zero. So that just leaves the middle integral. So we can now write that f of omega is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi, the integral between minus tor plus tor, and then we just have the integral of 1 e to the minus i omega t dt. And this is now a straightforward integral. It's just the integral of a complex exponential. This gives me 1 over the square root of 2 pi. And then, as always, when we integrate an exponential, we're left with the same exponential. In this case, we bring out a factor of minus i omega, and that goes into the denominator of the expression, and the limits are still minus tor to plus tor, like that. Now we can put in the limits, so we get f of omega is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi, and then we get over minus i omega, the first limit gives us e to the minus i omega tor, and then we have minus the second limit. We've got a minus tor, so that gives us e to the plus i omega tor, like that. We're now going to get rid of the minus sign in the denominator by switching the signs of the two terms in the numerator. So this now gives us 1 divided by 2 pi, and then we get i omega, and then we get e to the plus i omega tor minus e to the minus i omega tor, like that. We're also at this point going to put a factor of 2 into the denominator, and we're going and we put a 2 in the numerator to balance this. The reason we do this is we can now see that we have in the brackets, the e to the plus i omega tor minus e to the minus i omega tor over 2i is simply the definition of the sine function. So we now have that f of omega is equal to 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi. And then we have sine omega tor divided by omega. And then finally, because the sine expression is a function of omega tor, we put a tor in the denominator and a tor there so that the whole function now is a function of omega tor.
and this is our result and this if we look back agrees with the answer we were asked to get so the Fourier transform of our original top hat function is given by this function here now this is sine omega tor over omega tor is what's known as a sync function we can see that we have a sine function which gives us the oscillations and then that's modulated by the factor of omega tor in the denominator so what this does is it means as we go away from omega tor equals zero the oscillations get less and less intense they're damped by the term in the denominator the only tricky bit with this function is what happens when omega tor is equal to zero because both the sine function and the omega tor and the denominator both equal to are both equal to zero however it's fairly easy to show by using the series expansion for the sine function that in the limit of the um, of the variable omega tor in this case going to zero that the function tends to a value equal to one so the function is well behaved at the origin now we're not asked to sketch the function in this question but it's always good practice to think about what the function looks like so here's a plot of the function again we can see that we get the oscillations from the sine function but they're heavily damped as we go away from the origin by the term omega tor in the denominator and the function is well behaved at the origin because both the sine term and the omega tor term in the denominator are both odd functions the combination gives us an even function we can see that the function has mirror symmetry about the y-axis